All right, hello one. I just wanted to do a short video on Saturday just to um, round up on how things are actually working out nicely, to be honest. Um, now, as you know, we let me just stop this and let's just get back now. Um, let's do this 13 for tomorrow, for yesterday. Okay, as you know, yesterday we were looking at the market and evaluating how it was going on the US 500. And I did mention uh, we're going to get a Venus Uranus, uh, Neptune Mars, plus the Venus Pluto um, being conjunct. Okay, so on the, let me just make this, this is the 13th, yep, here we go. We've got the Venus um, sextile Uranus, that was being exact, which is, uh, which was very um, on the dot for us, um, plus on the, uh, on the Helio, let me just do this. It's just okay. So Venus 60 Uranus yesterday. Um, that was I said this would um, probably be a turning point. But Venus is a fast-moving planet because it's fast-moving. Um, it's not going to take too long. Okay, so it's being exact. This is not something that's going to last like uh, it's not a long top. Okay, so plus we've got on the geocentric. This this was Helio on the geocentric on the 13th which is yesterday we had the venus pluto um, venus again like i said it's fast moving it's an inner planet pluto is a um, outer planet so it's slower moving so this was also marking a top it's like a swing top right swing top swing bottom kind of thing uh, and that it was like saying to me okay this is like it's, it's going to be a good spot to be selling and oh, let me just plug this in before we run out of energy and the idea is, was therefore to sell it off. Okay, so yesterday at the top, the idea was to sell it off and take profit <coughs> and to match those levels with the Atom levels that we have. So on the SP500, as you can see, we had states where on the four hour chart, we were on the lines here at the top on the daily weekly weekly that's right weekly we were on the targets here so on the weekly we was already we were already seeing that this was a spot to sell because that's the level of the uh, breakout that started from here that was a second target there as you can see so this was already a place for the market to be stopping with venus and uranus sextile and venus and pluto conjunction so it was a good spot to short and this sudden up move was due to neptune if i pull back you'll see that this here okay as you can see this whipsaw here is four five o'clock bar okay so we come back to the 13th let's move forward to 4 5 p.m and then we'll see that uh, there you go for this mars aspect here to saturn okay mars saturn sorry did i say neptune and also neptune palace pushing it down to a buy spot but this this saturn mars was like restricting okay so it was like from a from a sudden up move there'll be a sudden sell because saturn is restricting it's like your borderline so this the four o'clock bar and this is the five o'clock bar here okay so during that period as you can see let's move one fifteen minutes back just there it was a sudden move down in fact slightly lower as you can see southern move down and then southern move up so it's basically mars and saturn and then market went up on this bar with neptune and palace that was good to go up to the resistance again to be sold off okay active at the top and the descendant so mid heaven and descendant working out here together so from there on 
it was good spot to sell and look what happened here afterwards this I did show before as you can see we've got a T square coming and as that T square happened oops there we had geometry there as you can see another triangle and then the market came down so from there on we had this bottom here and as you can see this is the six o'clock bar and that six o'clock bar was pretty much finishing off here okay this is where it was active here and that's when it saw the bottom so it made a bottom and because it's with the moon it's not going to last long if this was with a major planet we'd have a you know a deep bottom would be good to buy for you know for a longer term it'd be like a swing bottom but because it's with the moon and the moon moon is moving pretty fast after a while that was just going to get weakened off as you can see the aspects just falling as time goes by and the market just closed off with a bounce it was meant to go slightly upper why because as uranus here sextiling jupiter uh, sorry trining jupiter and also Ceres and Vesta it was bound to bring in some support but limited support the reason being is this is not final yet this is not um, exact until the 15th which is tomorrow it's a Sunday and this one's also the 18th so we still got some room to test higher levels um, but obviously we want to make sure um, we're also selling at the tops so as the market moved on and then it closed off afterwards around there so it was all balanced out as you can see the chart was balanced out just a nice little bounce and that's it so interesting thing is to look at gold now on top of that because I'm working on it this weekend now gold also had a really nice opportunity because um, Pluto affects gold so when Venus and Pluto conjuncted um, and um, with the Uranus Venus sextile this shot up so all the time it popped its head down I went into like a few trades like on gold um, I was in here it popped its head back long popped its head back long so I've, I've even got two trades open um, that's right this is gold as you can see I've still got two trades open now as you can see we're trading in such a way if you keep track of everything okay this is the whole of December right yeah this is all December as you can see and um, no losses um, I'm not correct all the time on the direction but the whole idea is that you're mixing technical analysis with um, some of the things that are going on in the sky now I used to do this like I said before in a previous video all the time but lately I've just been using the ATM technical analysis strategy but I want to get back onto the um, the astrological view of the sky as well so gold was very good because it came down it was just Venus Pluto conjunct it was good for gold to be bought at support and resistance now here at support as you can see this is also here the five o'clock bar and if I come back to 5 p.m. okay this is according to my okay the five o'clock there you see Neptune and Pallas now Pallas is a logical spot okay and Neptune and Pallas working together is they're either going to push you to a support or a resistance and it works differently on different um, like different um, tradable assets so it works differently with the SP 500 it works differently with gold but once you understand how it's working with gold once you understand what it's you know, system its routine is with gold it was obvious that this was going down to a logical level to be bought and that's logical level was the weekly pivot because it bounced off there before um, on the same day and also the day before and also the day before so it was 
right okay i was thinking this is great because sp500 i sold it and then on gold i bought it and it worked out really fine and if you look at the trades i'm only doing sp500 and gold at the moment and you can see they're all sell all the sp500s are sell and all the golds are buy trades they're not sell trades so um as you can see bouncing off that level um, where it was first bought around um, the pivot around that weekly pivot area there and also on the sp500 always selling at the tops so that we could you know just take profit at the shorts because the way you read the sky like i said on some of the things it's going to work differently even though this aspect is same for everything the way it affects certain um, assets are different why because you have to uh, make the map you got to read the map of the asset from its natal chart so for example a lot of people don't read um, geocentric sky when they do um, astro analysis and sorry heliocentric and heliocentric is very very important and also when you're looking into sp500 a lot of people like people disregard Juno, Ceres, um, Vesta, and Pallas, which I definitely take into consideration, as you can see. This is the geocentric sky. We have a symmetry here, um, and also these aspects are influencing it. And f you know, just looking at this, um, you can you know you can make out what's going to happen during the day. Also with the helio, this is very important. A lot of astro um, ast astrologers don't even look at the helio chart but helio chart is equally important um, because <clears throat> it's sun centric it kind of like gives you a broader idea of what's happening with the planet so what's happening with the planet and with us on the planet and Juno uh, is a very important um, asteroid for our case in sp500 because it's exact on three aspects uh, including latitudes as well so that being said not working with something that's influencing the chart is like is like a you know, bad idea so juno and ceres also this asteroid here um, they're very important uh, even though many people don't use it and this is why they have timing issues a lot of astrologers um, they determine an overall um, direction okay they're good with an overall direction but their timing is sometimes off so sometimes people say oh yeah well you know we're going down according to the aspects and so on and then the uptrend continues okay and the reason is they haven't taken into account the whole thing so taking the um, the planets into consideration is one thing but the um, the asteroids is, is also another thing when they're impacting it and it's, it's clear as well and this is important for timing as well so the inner planets and the outer planets their cycles plus the asteroids make your timing much better and this is why during the intraday session we could actually say oh at this hour i need to buy at this hour i need to sell so getting this right knowing that there's going to be a volatile move right around i don't know like 245 you need to start looking for something volatile because mars is heading in that direction you know new york is going to be opening so you understand that you know there's going to be something happening around 2.45. Now, this is 5 o'clock, and this is 2 o'clock. Now, look at what happened at 2 o'clock. So, this is the 2 o'clock bite, finished at 3. From there to bang, a sudden fall. See? So, understanding that there's going to be something with Mars, and if you're at a target, like on our brown lines here, if you're on a target like the daily brown, and if you're in a buy trade, from here to there, you need to start thinking about taking profit because this Mars is going to come in now because this is sextile and it's going to be exact, um, you know, on the 19th. So there's still time for its power to develop, but still, this is activated and this sudden move with Mars and, uh, and Saturn 
is definitely something to be taken into consideration because Saturn is a limit. It's a it's a borderline, and Mars is a you know is like sudden movements, accidents, um, things that can you know just go up and down, whipsaws um, in in trading. So what happens here is Saturn right at the top taking it to a limit, a borderline, which is this area here, and that's it. And bang, it comes into that. Um, it comes down. Its impact is until that's crossed over. <clears throat> and now, look, once it's at four o'clock bar, now we're on the five o'clock bar here. And all right, so here, as you can see, this is the four o'clock bar. On the four o'clock bar, and the five o'clock bar it's making that border let's check it out 357 four o'clock bar it's passing through and now as you can see that move with the five o'clock bar neptune and pallas taking it to the place of support that's what's happening at five o'clock, and immediately once that once that's over, once it passes that level, that's it. It's gone above the midheaven. If you do this, you can also do this placidus and just move it forward. Just bring it back. That's the midheaven. As you can see, that's the five o'clock bar. On the five o'clock bar, you understand that. The market's down there, and you need to buy it off. So it's a it's a matter of reading, and around there, that's the four o'clock bar. So on the four o'clock bar, as Neptune and Pallas are making that mid heaven and the descendant points on the four o'clock bar, it's going to a logical support level with that turn. As the market turns then what happens is Uranus and Jupiter, they come into action. Uranus is change, Jupiter is growth, enlargement. Immediately, you got to pick up. So it's all about reading the timing on these things so you can actually evaluate everything according to timings. Well, I think um, the week went on, in fact, the whole month went on pretty good. Now, like I said, I still got two open trades but timing this whole thing is great. And if you've got the ATAM trading strategy as well, it's just so precise with the levels, um, especially with the PST indicator that I um, invented myself, actually. Um, I put that together myself. Um, it shows you the price strength timing exactly on the dots. So it's just really good to combine everything together. So this whole month of you know 15 days we're on december 14 so these two weeks um since i tr started um this month has worked out quite well um but it's due to the fact that you know we're doing these precise entries especially on price um where that we understand there's going to be a reaction you know like this big fall we got this on oil as well so um, the people I trade with at the Global Trader Club, they got this on oil as well because we said oil, we just need to sell this, you know, sell. So there's a big fall on oil. Gold, we needed to go up. On the indices from the tops, we gave sells. And that was like intraday great trading. Um, so we're going to carry on with more and more analysis astrologically. And over time, I'm also going to put everything into like a... Um, format where a person can actually follow things through or if somebody wants to learn they can also learn it as well have a great weekend